The new search in the William Tyrrell case, several kilometres from where he disappeared. Prosecutors seek a tougher sentence for a driver over the hunter crash that killed his nephew. Australia's new wireless network becomes the latest front in tensions with China. And dream dashed, the Socceroos World Cup campaign ends at the hands of Peru. This is NBN News with Paul Mobb and Natasha Bayersdorf. Good evening. They've been scouring bushland at Kendall on the mid-north coast for the last two weeks. But today, police investigating William Tyrrell's disappearance changed tack. A new lead saw the focus shift kilometres away from his grandmother's home, sparking fresh hope of an elusive breakthrough. Carving through dense bushland, SES workers clear the way for police to pick through. Inch by inch, new ground is scoured for clues. Anything that might tell them William was here. A person or a vehicle that's been seen in the vicinity here around the time of William's disappearance or even more recently, acting suspiciously or looking out of place. Two weeks ago, police began a 10-day search in bushland surrounding William's grandmother's house on Benaroon Drive in Kendall. Today... They're focusing on an area not far from homes at Batar Creek, around four kilometres away. The new area is 800 square metres in size, which police have known about but haven't searched for operational reasons. We're looking for anything that's foreign to the area and anything that links to uh, William's disappearance. Police say it's almost impossible for William to have made it this far on his own. So if any evidence is found here, it's not because of misadventure, but because of human intervention. Jane Ellis was surprised to see emergency crews saturate her street, but she hopes it leads to something. I drove through on the day that it happened and didn't see anything. I just, it's mind-boggling to think what has happened and it would be great to have some answers. Yesterday was William's birthday. He would have turned seven years old, but he's still missing and his family still waits. A sentence given to a driver who was high on ice during a hunter crash which killed his nephew is being appealed. Prosecutors say the judge got it very wrong and the little boy's mother couldn't agree more. When Robert Shashati was jailed for just two years and three months, his victim's mother collapsed in sobs. These users are just getting this slap on the hand and off you go for three years and you're done and you're good to go again. Well, no. Today she showed extraordinary strength for her son, Marcus, facing his killer once again as the Crown appealed that sentence. It's been a long time waiting, um, but we're willing to, to wait that little bit more, hopefully for a fair their um, sentence this time around. Manifestly inadequate was how they described the term handed to Shashati, who had taken the drug ice just hours before he loaded the seven-year-old into his car. He was driving on the shoulder of a road near Williamtown when he hit a drain and crashed. Hit a drain and crashed. Today, the Crown argued the judge failed to take into account the fact he was driving erratically well before the crash. His appalling traffic record, which included 39 offences, and the need for a sentence which deterred others from committing the same crime. It was argued today the Court of Criminal Appeal had an opportunity to provide greater guidance to judges sentencing drug-affected drivers who kill people. Marcus's family buoyed by the thought of lasting change in his name. I know and we all understand that, you know, Marcus is never going to come back. But, you know, a lesson needs to be learned. Determined and remaining strong as they wait in hope for the court's decision. Kelly Fedor, NBN News. A Chinese tech giant claims it could fire up Australia's broadband network, but our intelligence agencies have other ideas. Today, the company's chairman hit back, arguing there's no evidence that it poses a national security threat. The future is just over the horizon. Fifth generation wireless will transform our lives. First generation wireless made mobile phones possible. The third generation connected them to the internet and the fifth will deliver speeds and services that are unimaginable today. 5G will be the foundation for driverless cars, augmented reality where information is projected on the real world and the internet of things which will automate our homes.
One of the companies best able to deliver 5G is Chinese telco Huawei. Huawei can help deliver to Australia 5G in a safe and secure way. Its local chairman is speaking out because Australian intelligence officials believe letting the Chinese tech giant into the 5G rollout is a national security risk. John Lord argues the company is part of Britain's phone network and its performance has been closely monitored there. Nothing sinister has been found. A Prime Minister who already has a difficult relationship with China will have to make a call on whether Huawei is in or out soon. We'll continue to uh, consider that and get the best advice on that from our security agencies. What Malcolm Turnbull was desperate to talk about today was the opposition leader's declaration that a future Labor government would unwind tax cuts for medium-sized businesses. Labor has now declared war on them in this extraordinary captain's call. One Labor backbencher struggled to defend his leader's call. That's a matter for Bill Shorten. Uh, he has announced that, as I've said. But Bill Shorten says his choice is to spend money on services. We will invest in schools. We will invest in hospitals and we will invest in the safety net. His case will be tested soon in five by-elections. Chris Ullman, NBN News. A 54-year-old man is dead after being hit by a ute at Stockton. Emergency services were called to the scene shortly after 6 o'clock last night. It's believed the victim was crossing Fullerton Street when he was hit by the southbound vehicle. Police say the 29-year-old driver on the Ute returned a negative breath test at the scene. He was taken to the John Hunter Hospital for mandatory testing.